What's going on? What's going on? How's all my embracers out there? This is Grace from Embrace the Grace, and we got another good one for you tonight. And it's 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 a it can be a bit complicated only if we make it complicated, because as usual, things are not that hard. Humans have the tendency to make it hard. So if this is um anybody's first time here at Embrace the Grace, welcome. I appreciate you coming in and please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. It's very important because a lot of work goes into this and a lot of time and energy. So I would really appreciate it. I do also have a, a cash app up on the screen. If it should move your heart right now, I'm working on a um, hard drive fund. So that's what that's for. But anyway, what are we talking about tonight? What are we embracing tonight? Tonight, what we're embracing is who rides in the front? Is it the wife? Or is it the mom? And you'll be surprised on uh, the lot of different perspectives that I've got on this. And I have to admit, I myself also learned a few things. And I myself, had my eyes open to different perspective, but that's a part of growing. And that's what we do over here. We embrace growth. We embrace our truth. We embrace our truth. So with that being said, you know, I'm going to let a few more people um, trickle in before I really get into the nitty gritty. I just want to say that last week's show was a tremendous success because they're still talking about it on YouTube and Facebook last week was about um, who should be served first, the husband or the kids. So that's still trickling on. But however, you know, I got this idea just off just by having mere conversation. And I, I like I said, I really, my eyes were really open to um, new things. And I'm like, wow, I never even saw it like that. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put the link up. And anybody is welcome to um, come up here and state their opinions and, and their, and their um, insight. But we will keep it respectful. Again, this channel is about growth and learning and becoming better version of ourselves. So there will be absolutely no disrespect, full behavior, no talk back, and especially no talking over the host, which is I. And I'm still waiting for a couple of people to chime in because, you know, usually my my colleague, Gary D, is up. Oh. <laughs> uh-uh, Gary. <laughs> Hold on a second. You... <laughs> Gary, you're gonna you're gonna live a long life. <laughs> I, was, I, I was just saying, you know, we're gonna let a couple more people um trickle in. I'm waiting for my colleague K Gary D, and then right there, you popped up. Ah, you see, great minds think alike. You see, absolutely. absolutely. So, of course, as we do every week, Gary D, I want to thank you for coming and showing your consistent support. But go ahead and introduce yourself and tell people where we could find you because that today that I watched, that was really good. I really, oh. enjoyed that. that was a good podcast. So go ahead. Well, um, thank you, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, Grace, for having me. As I've always told you, um, I will support you. I know you're normally on Mondays, but um, as long as I'm home before eight, then you got, you definitely have my support coming on. Um, I hear you. So to everyone, my name is Gary D. Uh, I've been in the uh, entertainment industry for about 20 years. Um, I've also have a background dealing in investment banking. Currently, uh, I am the, the president of Boardwalk Global Media, which is a boutique uh, multimedia entertainment company and podcast company. We do about seven podcasts every every week, 
And as you heard Grace say a little while ago, she saw one earlier today. Um, I'm also the owner of ESI Global Group, which is a boutique uh, management and consulting company. And, um, you know, I like supporting Grace and what she does. I think that uh, she asks a lot of the hard questions. And I think it's important that uh, these questions get answered. That, uh, and uh, okay, wait a minute. And and uh, you know, I, I think that in my experience, not, not only in life, but in you know, or I should say, not only in business, but in life, you know, I could definitely bring some um, expertise, if you will. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've traveled around the world. I've dealt with a lot of people. Um, I've heard a lot of different things. So, def so, so I definitely like to give my input. And I'm, and I consider myself a very logical, realistic person. I don't like following after the trends of everybody else. I think right is right, wrong is wrong. Um, but clearly, a lot of us have our own different opinions and, and views. But I think. For what Grace is doing here, when it comes to the relationships and asking the hard questions, they they definitely need need to be asked, and they definitely need need to be answered too. Exactly. If that's what's called effective communication, right? Absolutely. You know that. That's my thing. Effective. I I, I know that the back communication. And the back and forth dialogue, not just somebody listening and somebody talking or responding just to respond. You know? right. And they have to also comprehend what you're saying. Right. You know, I mean, you know, communication is great, but it's like, are you understanding what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, and, and I think that's 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 very important. Right. I mean, people I think that there's people that will let you talk just to hear you talk or just to let you get off what you have to say. But it's like, are they really comp comprehending? what you're saying to have a, a, a real uh, um, positive dialogue going on or to get a better understanding of each other. Because nowadays people don't like to talk. Absolutely. What do I always say? People are socially awkward. Yeah. People and Gary, you know, I, there's something that I've been doing lately that I know that has helped me and the other person that I'm trying to communicate to have clarification. I try to do a recap. So let's say you're trying to say something to me and I'll be like, well, Gary, this is what I got from what you said. And then I'll give you my interpretation. I'm either on track or now you have the opportunity to maybe rephrase it or re-say it. Or I will ask you, Gary, do you understand what I just said? And can you elaborate? What do you think that I'm trying to come across? So it's like a recap. I've learned to just like recap with the person especially um there yep, there you go that's a good one um miss rivera her comment is not up yet i guess there's a delay but she said reiteration absolutely yeah. so yeah, I'm, I'm getting i'm getting into the habit of really making sure that that person understands what i'm trying to relay because that's where the the miscommunication comes i may be telling you the sky is blue but you may be thinking that I'm telling you the ocean is blue. So we got to be on the same page. We may be reading the same book, but we're not on the same page. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like, look, I always feel that, you know, if I'm telling you something, I'm saying something to you now. In my mind, I may be thinking of it one, one way. You may be interpreting it something different. Exactly. So I have to ask you, like, Grace, did you understand what I said? And and you have to sort of tell me back, sort of make me to sort of make sure that we're on the same same page. Well, most think, people don't do that, Gary. Most people well, just no, take well, it for see, granted. That you, well, you know, a lot of the, a lot of people nowadays, I think that in this whole era of texting, mm -hmm. texting leaves so much room for miscommunication, misunderstanding. Mis misinterpretation, especially if you need to have a real conversation or if you felt like, you know, maybe you hurt somebody's feelings or somebody hurt your feelings or what have you, and you need to have, you need to talk to the person. I need to hear 
the emotion in your voice. You can't feel that through text. Exactly. Text can be misread and misinterpreted. So when you're able to talk to someone, you can hear the emotion in their voice, right? And, and, I, and or I, the lack of emotion. Or the lack of emotion, but I, but I think that's so very important, right? Because you have a lot of people that like to hide behind texting. And you're right? actually and really right. I used to be one of those because I had a job that forced me to talk all day. Mm -hmm. I didn't like coming home and now having to talk on the phone with people. And I got checked. I got huh. checked. And they'd be like, yo, you're horrible. You, you know, you just want to text and this and that. I want to hear your voice. I want to make sure. And I had to like retrain myself. It's like, mm -hmm. man, I'm, I'm becoming like one of the millennials. <laughs> okay? yeah, yeah. People don't care that I have a job that I talk all day. They only care about that is their time to talk and, and stuff like that. You know, um, friends and family will reach out to me and it would take me forever to reach out to them. And it took a couple of good friends, you know, because the good friends are the ones that'll tell you like it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and now I'm I'm not perfect, but I have embraced it. And I do understand that That's people want to hear That's my good. voice. People want to talk. You know, they're not with that texting because maybe they have a job that they're typing and texting all day and they would rather talk. So even well, me, I, guys, even me, well, I, mean, I had to I had to change my ways. Well, I, I think like I, I sort of let me take myself, for example, I have a crazy schedule. Right. So yes, you I do. think most people would understand that if I don't want to that if I didn't want to talk. However, but because I'm the type of person I want to hear, because if I'm going to connect with you, I need to hear you. Right. Um, if you're having a bad day or what have you. So and, and, I, and I think that that's very important. Unfortunately, again, as I was saying, we're in a I guess a time where everybody wants to text and then. They wonder why there's so much miscommunication, right? Mm -hmm. They wonder why why you know, there's, there's not only miscommunication but misunderstood. Well, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Well, you know, I, to me, if someone's important enough to you, you pick up the phone and talk to them. At least that's what I feel. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. No, right? no, Gary. Look, you're gonna you're gonna tell who knows me personally, and they're gonna say their shit. Look at Miss Ferreira. Yup. And that's one of them, you know. <laughs> and then um, Matthew said, "I know that's right." So you you you're gonna be able to tell who I who knows Ooh. me personally because they're gonna talk their shit and they don't care that I'm live or I'm on the phone. <laughs> or I'm right, right, right. Those are the real ones. Those that's are right. the ones that keep me grounded. You know, they don't they know me by just grace. They don't know right. embrace the grace and this. Right, and right, 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 right. So and and the thing is what I've learned, you guys, I know we're not even touching on the topic, but me and Gary tend to have good conversations. And this <laughs> is good. This is communication 101. Absolutely. Uh, what I've learned is first of all, we too goddamn sensitive nowadays. Okay. Mm -hmm, true. And what I've learned is not to get defensive or upset when I'm getting constructive criticism, because what I look at is who is the source? If it's somebody that I have no value of and I don't care, then I need to brush it off. Mm -hmm. But if it's, if it's somebody that I value and it's a relationship that I value, I have to sit in that. I have to sit in that shit. How hard, however hard it is to hear, if they cared enough to come at me raw and tell me like it is, then I should be care enough to listen and sit on it and not become so defensive. Because at the end of the day, their love for me and their well intentions should be recognized and not so quick to dismiss. And a lot of people need to see that. You know, if your significant other is telling you something and you don't like what they're hearing, that's fine. You don't have to like it, but just hear it, mm -hmm. sit in it because they're important to you. They're part of your life. But we don't tend to do that. We tend to attack everybody 
that's trying to give us constructive criticism. We well, don't look at the source. I mean, look, the reality is everything is not going to be all rosy and smelling good, mm -hmm. right? It's not. And I think some people, I think we're in a time where people, they only want the good, no. right? And Everybody gets a trophy. That's, right. that's the it, mentality. Yeah, that's not how it works. That's not how we came up, right? So, you know, so, 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 you know, people have to be able to take the constructive criticism, especially like if it's coming from someone that you care about or someone in your immediate circle, then yeah, you have, because nobody that you care about or cares about you is going to tell you anything bad. Mm -hmm. Right? So they're going to tell, and sometimes they tell you stuff that you don't want to hear, but you need to hear. Right? You may not like it, but it's the truth. The truth sometimes is not going to be all warm and fuzzy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And people tend, tend to forget that. You're absolutely right. So, so you guys, if you didn't take anything away from this, this little um, nugget that we hear talking about, <laughs> it's just important to get the correct interpretation of what's absolutely. being relayed. And two, consider the source, just like Ms. Rivera just said, always consider the source of information. Right. So with that being said, Gary, I, I know you saw the thumbnail and the title of the show today. And today it's going to be about who sits in the front seat of the mm -hmm. car. Is it the wife or is it the mother? And Gary, you'd be amazed. While I was doing my research, mm -hmm. again, there was a lot of things I've already been doing right. And it feels good when you're doing right and you have confirmation. But it's so much deeper than this. And it's so much more. It was just like last week. You know, everybody thinks, oh, feed the kids first. Then right, yeah. what I was trying to portray is the symbolism of feeding the man first and why right. it was so important. And it's the same thing with this tonight. It's not even about who gets to sit in the front and in the back. It's about honoring the relationship the marriage, your mother. I, I mean, it's it's a lot of things across the board. And of course, you know, I got some, I got one, two, three, four, five, five little clips that I want to show because we're going to mm -hmm. show di different interpretations. But um, God talk, you know, and I, and I try not to bring religion into this, but because I'm old school and a lot of my ways of thinking and the way I move, is because of God and the Bible. And God really, really puts emphasis on the marriage. It's all about the marriage. And we have to stop with these egos. <laughs> you know, we have to stop thinking, you know, and as a, and as a matter of fact, I, I, I wrote it down. It says here, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and thou two shall become one flesh. Mm. So they no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Right. And for all my men out there, that includes your mama. <laughs> that includes your mama. Men have to realize that once you get married, that's it. You can no, you no longer have a, a pass to be a mama's boy. That sh you got to outgrow that shit. And I have a son and I'm a boy mom. And I have to, I'm going to have to check myself and deal with this as well. And, and the fact that I, we're talking about this now, the fact that um, I see how different People of different ages think and move. I'm going to have to check myself too and realize. And I remember my mother telling me when my son was very, very young, she's like, love your son, teach him well. But just remember us mothers have sons for another woman. He will, he will be taken. Mm -hmm. And that hit me hard because I'm like, wow. 
we really do. We have sons and they get all, and they go off and marry another and they marry a woman and they turn to have their own families and stuff. So don't get so attached where you hinder that man or you turn him into a mama's boy. And I think there's, there's a lot of issues with this one. The main thing I learned by doing my research with this is it's too much egos involved. You know, you got to know when to fold. You got to mm-hmm. know your position. You got to know when to pull rank. You can't just be all over the place and thinking that you the shit just because you're the mom and you can't, and you can't think that you're the shit because you're the wife. First of all, the first thing that most people need to do is make sure you marry somebody that you get along with their families, because you're not only marrying that person, you marrying into a family. You're going to have to Mm -hmm. deal with their ass because it's not fair. A lot of women and a lot of men try to isolate people from their families. And that's not right. But then again, the mothers need to back off. And understand that now their son is married, but a lot of women tend to make their sons husbands. <laughs> you know, they and they and they, you know, maybe they've never had that love, and and they see their son as the man of their life, and don't know how to let go. Mm-hmm. And that that's where a lot of this conflict comes. Who should sit in the front? And who should sit in the back? And I was talking to a gentleman and he gave a very, very good solution that kills all of this. But I'm not going to tell you guys that solution until the end of the podcast. Because if I say it now, it no, we're going to wait to see what everybody has to say, all the different thoughts and ideas. And then this salute, and it was so simple when he, when we were speaking of it and he was like, well, Grace, that's easy. The fact that it was so easy to solve just goes to prove the importance of men. Y'all think logically. See, us women, we're emotional. We want to pull rank. I'm the wife. I got to sit in the front. Well, I'm your mama. I I was in labor for 33 hours and carried you for nine months. You know, the old, the old guilt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what happens when you're pregnant. You carry a baby. And, you know, I tell my son all the time, 33 hours in labor with that big old head. But at the end of the day, I chose to have him. I chose to get, you you know, so we can't Mm -hmm. make our children feel guilty. They didn't ask to be here. So let me let me get caught up with my comments because my comments are just as important. So uh, Miss Rivera says old school morals. You're right. I get called an old head all the time. I'm an old lady. But you know what? Them old school morals, Lonnie, worked back in the days. They weren't perfect. But I'll tell you what, it's better than what the hell is going on right now in this world and these relationships and these children and these marriages. I'm not saying we got to go back to the Stone Age, but we got to stick to a blueprint. I mean, there's no there's no saying that we can't make adjustments and tweak things, but we got to do it for the better. And honestly, we're not. We're not moving in a better direction. We're a lot of us are lost in the sauce. Mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and continue. I got Matthew. He said something. Hey, hey, hey. I'm always going to be a mama's boy. But with all respect, everyone needs to know their place. The man is the head and then the woman. So she, out of respect, gets the front seat. Matthew, you are absolutely right. But it's not because of the woman that she gets the front seat. It's because she's your wife. I mean, you you should know. You, and congratulations, Mr. Rosado. You just got married on Monday. So I want to give you a shout out to that. So it's not because she's she's the woman. She's the, she's your wife and the marriage comes first. Once you left mom and she left mom and dad and you left, that's it. Y'all are a team. It's y'all too, Bonnie and Clyde. And the thing is that more mothers need to understand that and, and back off and, 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 and value their sons 
marriage. Um, that was a good one, Matthew. I like that one. Then I got Miss Almond Eyes. Hey, y'all. Hi, Almond. How are you, baby girl? I've already put the link up there. I, that's it. So if anybody's interested in coming up and talking and whatever, you're welcome to. But I am going to, before I ask uh, your thoughts on this, let's go ahead and do a, a clip. Okay. The first clip. The first clip I'm going to do, it's a skit. It's a setup. You know, the husband and the wife are in cahoots to this, and it's an old school Jamaican mama. Okay. You know, and it was funny as hell. It was kind of long, so I just clipped it just right when the wife sits gets in the car. But just remember that this is a clip. This was planned. But just look at the reaction of the mother, and then we're going to talk about this. So let me, guys, be patient. Let me set this up. Okay. Here. Share screen, da da da, and we're gonna go here. Okay, right here. Share. Just because it's trying to, uh, it's spinning. Hold on, because it, it lost it. It went all the way back to the beginning. So let me get it where she sits in the car. Hold on, guys. Be patient. Okay. Tio, what would you? I'm not going to tell you what it looks like. I don't. If you want. Okay, so right now they're just having a conversation and waiting for the wife. Here it is. Come on, no, don't let me down, Internet. From my butt. Let's go before me hit my youth. See, everybody have on their seatbelt? Like, I feel like I should be sitting in the front. Let's go, Trim, go. Why you want to sit in the front? You should. It's like hard back here. Can you sit in the front? Sit through my knee, no good. Mm -hmm. Me have to sit down in the front. Why would you want to sit in the front? We have a big car. There's so much space. There's space in there. I mean, I'm his wife. I don't sit in the front. I, I doesn't matter. Like... Let me tell you this now. You are the Angelo wife. Yeah. If I'm wife, mm -hmm. we're driving. Different. She carried it. She ch she ch carried them. I carry you for blood clot ten months and one week. Oh hell no! Ten months and week. Me show nine months with your two pick me them. Ten months me carry you for. Yeah. So me deserve to sit on the front of your car. No, I didn't tell you to carry me for that long. Me never tell myself to carry. Yeah, that's so why. You turn up there. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. What? You're gonna make me stay in the back? Who you guys talk? Who are you talking? I mean, you no know, say me carry you. Yeah. But ten, ten months and mm -hmm. one week. And who are you talking to? Yeah, but we've been together for like fifteen years. That's shit. <laughs> oh. Look, you haven't been taking care of him for the past fifteen. Years I have. So no, you've been uh, uh, for 15 years and I'm here. So, no, 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 you don't know where I'm, you are going. I'm going to show you where to go. So I'm sitting right here in the front seat and take you. Tell yeah, me to my appointment. I'm not going to come. 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 I
don't need come. to come. Well, you need to sit because I'm not sitting in the back seat. I can't well, you're not. Hold, okay. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I you don't said, need to come. Okay. It's not well, fair, I And that's why I said. Halfway, you drive in the front, and then you drive in the front halfway. Half is half. I know, but she can drive herself if she wants. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Ali, I have an appointment. You don't have one. You don't need to come to my appointment. You don't need to bring her to my appointment. For she come tell me some need for driving a flipping back seat. And I, oh. Oh, okay. She never said that. She said half, half. She never said nothing. You say half. You half. But we think the same thing. I don't, don't give no what, shit. That's what you were thinking, right? Halfway, yeah. you drive in the back. No. And she weren't thinking that. No. She weren't thinking me sit in the back and you she sit in the front seat. So hold on. Are you choosing your mom over me? No, 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 no. I got to choose. If I'm gonna choose anybody, I'm gonna choose mom over you. No matter what, I'm gonna choose mom. Yes. Yeah, and it no matter. Tonight. No, I'm not sleeping. <laughs> Me, I'm not to sleep with me. If you choose Why me, you there's a difference. Right? Okay. If 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 if, who would you want to hear your mother to choose? With the Angela, you would your mother. Who you would you would you choose? You, if it was me. If it was him and your mother, your who would be, you choose? Your mom would be sitting in the front. I would be in the. I'll be, dri I'll be, I'm, I'll be driving. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. If remember, guys, it's okay. Was you and your mom? I don't know. Choose. No, that's not really a real question that you can. And you no, she she wants you to answer. I that. need an answer from she. What does she, she choose? I'm telling the, you. But that's not the predicament no, right now. No. Yeah. It, it's not the predicament we're in. Why right it's now. not? Why it's not the because predicament? You, she. You know what? You, you know what? You, you know what? Yeah. I should make this a decision. This car is hella hot. I know, but I, I should. Yeah. You just go in the back. Jaxi and Ashley just come in. Can you open the door? Or the child lock is on there. That's for sure. Okay. So she be staying at the back. She staying at the back. No, but you can get doing the. No, but I don't want her to come in at the front. So you're not gonna get up. No, the front, open no. The, the child lock door. No, I'm not. Mom, that, that's disgusting. I don't here. give a fuck. You. You look right like now. Mom, no, I the, don't. Mom, what's the number one commandment? Thou shalt, thou shalt cherish, thou dodge. Child and thou shalt give the child the that is okay. the yeah. what? I'm the what do you mean by that? Which one is that one? That is the next one. Yo. That's what I mean. You're making it. Making it a big deal. Your wife is making it a big deal. What's wrong? Not... Uh, and her, so and her booty. I need mean, good, you know, I need no good, and I need room. That's not enough. Clothes is not enough room for me. Yeah, but did you get it? What you need, Bruce? Yeah, come on. Let's go. Hold mm -hmm. on. that we're bringing you in the first place not get upset this we're is just... this is not to be grateful for i can't... what did he say carry you for a 10 months and one week but she's been with me almost basically an eternity i no, don't I, I feel like you can't use that because i can just lose you that said half half you go halfway front seat then we switch you come inside the front Mm -hmm. Your girl need to do her math. Mm -hmm. That's what she give for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Because if you was you, she had to carry you, you'd be 15. So, 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 so 15 years in a day, and the high school, but she did have to have and the your mother, and you did your mother, yard. So,
Okay, that 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 was kind of enough. You guys got the idea of what um I was saying. I, um, Gary, I'm gonna address you once I finish reading these comments because they came for it. Yeah. So hold on a second. Um, now almond eyes. I'm gonna show it anyway. And YouTube was wanting me to review this. This chick is white, so she can stay in the back. Now almond eyes. I don't think this has anything to do with race, and it shouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. So we're, I'm, I'm still going to read the comments, but it, this shouldn't have to do anything with race, but it is what it is. Okay. And now um, Grace came and said, my opinion is that wife should respect to her elders, especially his parents, and willingly want to sit in the back and relinquish the front to his mom. And you know what, Grace? Feels weird calling somebody else Grace when my name is Grace, but I love it. Um, when we're in the same podcast, I'm in, I'm addressed as Embrace, and she's embraced as she's addressed as Grace. So you're absolutely you're absolutely right, Grace. Before I did the research on this particular topic, I feel the same way about you. I have been raised. And I don't even want to use the word elders because somebody hit me. Well, there's some mothers that are not elders. So I'm just going to say people that are my senior, I was always taught to res show respect. And if a woman is secure enough to know what her position is as the wife, I don't have a problem sitting in the back seat. Let him be up there with his mama because I know who he's coming home to. I know who I know who's feeding him. I know who's washing his clothes. I know, you know, she had her turn with her son. She did her thing. And as a woman and as a mother, I respect where the lady was coming from, but I wouldn't throw it in my son's face in front of her to, out of guilt because they put that poor man stuck in the middle because egos were clashing. So Grace, I agree with you. I my initial thought was I'll sit in the back. It's not that big a deal. We you see what I'm saying, Gary? Life is already hard. And us humans, we make it even harder. And and it unnecessarily. Okay, so then um Am and I said this is a choice. She shouldn't expect that. Okay. And then Grace came back and said, I personally have jumped in the back for any elder out of respect. And if you can't respect your elders, then how are you going to respect your man? And, and, and you're right. You're absolutely right. And I, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I, the, com the comments are coming in. Mm -hmm. So um, Am and I said, I have had elders tell me to get in the front. And some of them know what's up, especially if their spouse is with them. Exactly, Almon. Absolutely. As a mother, I'm going to have to come to the, the realization that my son one day will get married and I'm no longer number one. I'm going to be number two, especially if I go by what God says and what the Bible is. I'm not going to pull rank. I know I'm his mama. I know it was 33 hours of labor. I know what I went through with him. But if I taught him to be the man that I expect him to be, I would joyfully sit in the back and let them two be up front and call it a day. Y'all driving me around. I'm good. I'm chilling in the back. <laughs> you know, I have no problems with that. And then um, I have Matthew say, big facts, I'm in eyes. Okay, Gary. <laughs> There's some more. Hold on. I don't. Why is it mama going and daddy isn't? Why is mama going and daddy isn't? I don't know, Amin. I, I don't know. And then Amin came back and said, get turn is over. Get in the back with your man. That could be another solution. But I, I know you weren't in here when I said this, but I think there's a very easy solution to this where everybody's happy. But I'm not going to I'm not going to mention it till the end. And you might hear it throughout the movie clip, throughout the clips that I have. But Gary, now, now is your turn. <laughs> what is, what is your take on the whole topic? 
And then what is your take on the little clip that we just saw? I mean, I guess just to wrap it all together, um, to me, it's, you know, I would have my wife sit in the front seat. Um, like if, and see, this is, this is not complicated the way people make it. Um, I think that any, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, responsible, well-grounded man um, um, will have his wife in the front seat. Um, the mom can sit in the back. Now, if the wife, you know, out of respect says, you know, okay, let your mom sit in front, then okay, no big deal, right? But initially, to me, my wife would would uh, sit in sit sit in the front. Um, the other thing is that you have a lot of these guys that are serious mama's boys, so mom can't do no wrong. So, and I think that's an issue, right? That's an issue, and and it's it's always this always going to clash, always going to. And I think that, you know, maybe the mom is guilting the son or what have you. But I think that when you got those guys that are the serious mamas boys and mamas can't do anything wrong, then yeah, then then that that is a definite major major problem. But yeah. as I said. For me, my wife would sit in front and um, my mother would sit in the bank. But if my wife wanted to, out of respect, let my mom sit in front, then that would be, you know, that would be no, that would be no big deal. So it's, it's not as complicated or difficult as people make it, at least in my opinion. And again, if you have that conversation... <laughs> exactly. Before you get married or even throughout the marriage. And I'll be like, Gary, if you was to come pick me up and mom's is already in the front, what would you like to see? You, you see, this is, and then me right. and Gary preach this every week, week after week. It's all about communication, people. Very you strange. can't have those hard, hard conversations when you're already in, in the marriage. You got to have them before to see if your Absolutely. thoughts and views align with each other. Absolutely. You said because the key they, word, align. Because if they don't, now we're unequally yoked. And now we are going to have a lot of issues unnecessarily because they were not communicated. Right. You don't want to know that, you're, that your new husband is the spender and you're a spender too. You want to know before the marriage, who's the saver, who's the spender? What are your views on discipline? What do you see? These are the conversations we need to have before we get married, not in the divorce proceedings. <laughs> you know, so, OK, so then Grace said it kind of seems like some women that have a problem sitting in the back may also have issues with authorities and being selfless. But then, see, it's. Go ahead. It goes back to and you just the conversation like what type of woman are you marrying, right? What type of man are you marrying? Because I for I for sure I'm not going to marry a woman that is going to have issues over stuff like that. I mean, you know, I I would imagine that before you get married to someone, you really have some serious conversations to see where uh, y'all align. Um, exactly. You know, you, I'm sure that before you get married, you would have gone out with your, you know, your, your future husband or wife and you would have met the mom and dad, you know, probably would have had an outing. So these things could have already been in motion, but you could see how they act, right? So why wait till you're already married and then, this kind of stuff starts starts on happening. And and really, if you're gonna marry, like from a man's point, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna marry a woman that has problems with an authority figure, then that's probably not a marriage you wanna be in. Exactly. I'm just because you're her, the husband is the authority. Well, I, I hate to use that word because women go crazy with the word submissiveness and authority, but at the end of the day, the man is the head of household. 
So you are a woman is under a man's uh, um, the the man is under God's authority. Mm -hmm. The the children are under a woman's authority. The woman's under a man's authority, and the man is under God's authority. That's the order of operations. But unfortunately, feminism try to trick women into <laughs> thinking that they're equal to men. But that's a whole nother show. Yeah, that's a whole nother show. So Am and I said, yeah, lots of single moms do. And you're right, Am and I. A lot of these single moms, one, demasculate their sons. Of course. Two, make them their son husbands. Yep. And, and just cannot let go because they did not marry themselves. They have no life and they cling on to their children and expect their children. Yes, we are looked upon as to take care of our parents when they get older, but it, it, it really isn't an obligation because it's an obligation to the adult, the, the parents, to make sure their shit is in order because their children are going to have their own families and their own kids and their own husbands to deal with. You know, there's nothing wrong with letting mom move in into the house where, you know, as a lot of people throw their parents into nursing homes. But at the end of the day, you can't guilt trip your children into making them take care of you. You should have planned your life better. You should have made sure you had your retirement and your nest egg and done better for yourself instead of putting that burden on your children. I mean, that's not what we have children for. Is that is that what we're having children for? Is to make sure we have somebody taking care of us at, at the latter part of our lives? Now, would I love to live with my son if I need be when I get older? Of course. But if his wife has an issue with it and has a problem with it, I can't just bully myself into their house. That's not right. And a lot of mothers do that. A lot of they do that and they put that pressure on them. And it's it's just it's, I just don't think it's right. And then Matthew, he has a solution. He said, just put both their asses in the back. I love <laughs> he's joking. I mean, that could be yeah. another solution. They could duke it out in the back, you know. And then Amin eyes came. Why are we calling that respect? That is the first problem. If my mom is getting in the back, then there shouldn't and there shouldn't be as special rules for his mom. There should be no special rules for nobody's mama. There's no because special, but I'm just saying it's the. I, I think that it's it's a sign of respect if the husband. So if it's the so if it's the husband driving. And the wife, out of respect, wants to wants to uh, sit in the back and let the mom sit in the front. The same rule would apply to our, our mother, right? The Absolutely. same would, yeah, it would it would apply. So it's not a one sided thing. I mean, to me now, if let's say my wife is driving and we're going to get her mother. I would sit in the back. Now, if she was like, well, Gary, no, but, do, but see, I have respect for my elders. You follow me? Uh -huh. So I wouldn't have a problem doing that. Right? So, um, but yeah, it's, you know, it works both ways. Right? It's not like, oh, well, uh, you respect my mother and I don't respect yours. Like, it doesn't work like that. Exactly. Not one mother is better than the other. Not ex right. Not one mother. You know, they both get they both get the equal treatment, right? The same treatment, the same level of of respect. Um, but I, I think that, as I was saying before, there's some of these guys who have become serious mama boy, mama's boys, and the mothers know it. So for the woman marrying into that. That's problems waiting, waiting to happen. Exactly. And again, that goes back to my show three weeks ago about the single mother epidemic. Do you see how when you start peeling the onion, how many levels, you know, mm -hmm. that that how many levels of issues can occur from a single parent household? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I said I still go, I still don't get 
than not staying in the back hugged up with your husband. I mean, that could work too. We can make mama drive. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's just so many ways that we can go about this. But what I'm trying to show is that this shouldn't even be like drama. You know, this shouldn't be stressful. This should be something yeah. like, you know. So with that being said, let's go on to our next clip. Because, you know, I like to show little clips and everything so we can talk about it. So give me just a minute. Hold on. I got to press this. Share screen, share screen, Chrome top. Okay, let me see. Come on, Internet. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Give me just a second. Uh oh, uh oh, hold on. Yeah, this was this one was a doozy. I got to start it from the beginning. Give me just a second. This, this one was a good one. Uh, how serious it can get. Oh, my God. Okay, so with that being said, hold on, let me um stop share. Okay, so that was that was kind of that was as ugly as it can get. Mm -hmm. I feel. Well, I think because I try not to say I feel. So, Gary, what's your take on that one? I mean, the mom was already in the front seat, right? Okay, you just disappeared. No, I'm here. I just had to cough, and I didn't want, want you guys to hear. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. You're yeah, well, your, from what you're, I, you're, go ahead. Oh, so the mom was already in the front seat. So under that, uh, under that, I mean, in that, in that situation, then yeah, the wife can come and sit in the back. I mean. That's from what I'm seeing. And you're, and you're absolutely right. She made a situation go to DEFCON 5 yeah, unnecessarily. Right. That was unnecessary. She's already in the front. She's, she's, already she's already in the front. This is what I'm saying. Right. She's already in the front. So in that scenario, yeah, the wife come and sit in the back. What she expect? The mom to get up and go in the back seat? No. Okay, I can't hear you. I can't. My bad. 
Um, okay. And if I see my mother-in-law in the front seat, I don't care if it's my car. See, that's another thing. We, we right. Our egos are so big. Oh, well, I pay for this car. This is my car. Ain't nothing yours. When you're married, it's both yes. of y'all's. And see, and that is the thought process that's killing these marriages nowadays. What's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. Yeah. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. A happy wife is a happy life. <laughs> a happy spouse is a happy house. Yeah. What, what what did I just read to you guys? Hold on, I think it fell on the floor. Um, you become one. And and I have to and I have to pull up PA Texas um comment. Welcome. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. But I'm gonna respectfully, respectfully disagree with you mama first no it's not once you get married pa it's not it's all about the marriage okay it's you left mama's house to be with your wife and now that's your wife. That's your that's your point guard. Okay. I I, I mean I, I don't know how else I, I don't know how else to say it. But like I said, I'm gonna have to respectfully disagree because it's not about the mama anymore. Mom did her job. Her role is done. Now it now it's time to be a husband and a father. And that is why that chaos happened in that video. You know who I blame for that chaos right there? Who do you think I'm going to blame, Gary? <laughs> it's the it's, it's, it's the man. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. He has been so demasculated and punked out by his mama. But that's what I'm... That he doesn't... Come on. It's your job as the man to show leadership because Wait, that's see. what you guys do. You bring structure and discipline. And, and you it. hear what your pants have hanging down. Talking about, I ain't seen mommy since Corona. I'm, you you see, know? This, see, it's your your wife is supposed to. There should be a certain level of respect that your wife already has for you and your mother already has. So, and even if that bickering shit would have started. He was supposed to nip it right in the butt. And that didn't happen. And you're absolutely right. And then Amin I uh, said, hell no, that plan will get you divorced. Forsake so, but, others. That is in the vows. And that but, and PA, you see that? That is see, in the both of them have no respect for him. For the, and, and I'm gonna read it to you again, PA Texas, because you weren't in the room. This is what it says. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and become two and become one flesh. So they no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no one separates, not even your mama. And and, and hold on, because he, um, he, he came back and said, I've never met a happy wife. Hmm. <laughs> Damn, I, I'm not even going to say nothing to that one. And then he said, I respectfully disagree as well. I was a I was a son first and forever. I don't know. Maybe I, I just went through a lot with women. My mama never cheated, never cheated on me or left me for Pookie. So agree to disagree. And you know what? That and and that's awesome. That's that's what we do here. We we talk about things, we agree or we disagree. But again, you can't put all the blame. On the women, you also got to look at the type of women that you're choosing and why this is this happens. You can't just blame it all on the other party. You got to look within yourself and see why you have been through a lot with the women. I mean, could it be the choices that you're making? Could it be um, you didn't see the red flags or you chose women. or you chose the choices that you're making could to. Be, uh oh. Um, you didn't 
Um, uh, you didn't see the red flag sooner or later, but it's good. Um, hold on. I got more. And I've never been married, so that says a lot. <coughs> that well, as well, PA. Go ahead. Let me just let me just say something quick. I think, you know, I will say, and actually I was talking to someone about this the, the other day. Men, more times than not, they know what type of woman they're dealing with. Good, bad, or indifferent. If he tells you that he doesn't know, he's lying. Right? So men, they know, they already know. They already know. So, and because they already know, they choose to deal with that situation. Right? Women, they operate differently. Right? Women operate with the idea of what they have in their head about who the guy is and then the reality of him. Two different things. And a lot of times they get that crossed. And that's what and and that's and that's and that's where the problem you know comes in. But with men, men more times than not, they know the type of woman that they're dealing with. They know. They know they they know. Okay. Come on. I was I was talking I was talking to somebody today and she said, you know, a lot of us wives, we just want to know that the husband knows that we're number one. But most of the time we'll always let the mom sit up front. But when you don't make us feel or show us that we're number one, then we a lot of women tend to lash back and act the way this woman, see, she, she must go through this every time. And she said it. Why is it every time I'm with your moms, I got to go through this. So he should have had a conversation with his mother behind the scenes when his wife first mentioned her discomfort and sit down with mom and say, look, mom, you can't act like this. I'm a married man now. You have, you have to respect her. You have to respect my marriage because it's okay to respectfully check your parents because well, parents are not perfect. Absolutely. But you know, some of these people <laughs> are so scared to talk to their parents. They're humans too. They got to put their pants on one leg at a time, just like we do. And you could say what you feel and what you think, but respectfully, there's nothing wrong with making, sitting your mom down and saying, look, mom, you know, she's my wife now. And as you know, marriage should come first. I love you and I respect you, but you have to respect my wife. You know, the, the man has to, the man is the one, you guys are the, the kings of your kingdom. And you guys are the ones that run shit. And if you if you run a sloppy, messy kingdom, then that's exactly what you're going to get. Exactly. But if you run a kingdom with discipline and love and patience, then that's what you're going to have. I always tell men, if you want an angel, then create a heaven for me. If you want me to be an angel, make it comfortable for me. Make me feel safe. Make me be okay to okay with some of the bullshit I got to go through. But you see, you can tell that this mother and son never had this conversation. He's scared to talk to his mom. Scared to talk to her. Well, see, so look at, so look at the, I mean, look at the relationship that he has with his mother and look at the one woman that he wanted to pick him. Basically got emasculated by his mother and then he gets, picks a woman that emas emas emasculates him. So he ended up picking a woman that was just like his mother. Yep. And, and so he's never gonna learn. He's never gonna learn. That's what it that's what he's in. That's gonna be a constant, constant yeah. fight. And it's either constant gonna end fight. up in divorce yeah. or him or him or him and his mama are gonna not have a relationship anymore. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I always pay attention to how a man. My mom always told me, see how a man treats his mother. And most likely that's how he's going to treat you. And that's, that's true in, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And PA, I would love it for you to come up. I, I mean, I'll, I'll put the link in again because we had awesome conversation last night in another podcast 
And um, I feel so honored that you came to check me out. I really appreciate it. And I did see that you subbed up as well. I appreciate that too. And you have some good things to say. So let me, let me, um, there's some more comments here. Aminize, um, one of the comments that you said, you two said no, no. So that's why I didn't post it. Don't think I overlooked it. Okay. Because they do be monitoring these comments. <laughs> Um, PA Texas said, I know I've picked bad in the past. I used to be green as fuck. I did not see that ratchet coming. When she came, she raised hell. I didn't know what woman could be that foul. I'll never be the same. And I get it. And I get it, PA. That's why I have been talking to my son since he was six years old. I know you guys think that's young, but you got to plant the seed early. I told him straight up. Some bitches ain't shit. They're manipulative. They'll use you. They'll, all, they'll take advantage of you. And I teach him things and I show him how to look for red flags. You know, there was something I taught him about when you're just, when you know you're with a cray cray, make sure you always have your keys and your cell phone in your pocket. <laughs> because if things get hairy, you know, you know, the first thing we like to do is grab your keys and your phone. Keep it in your pocket. So you can just get up and leave. And, and these are things that I've really tried to teach my son because, PA, I don't want to catch no charge. Okay? I, I really don't. And I told my son, I'm not going to uphold you in your wrongdoing. If five girls come knocking down the door asking for you all at the same time, I'm going to pop some popcorn. I'm going to let them all in the house. And I'm going to see how you're going to handle yourself. As long as they don't touch you and put your hands on you. And I tell him, don't do nothing to a woman that you wouldn't want a man to do to me. Because then, then, then you're being a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. But you live and you learn, PA, and you can't dwell on that. And I understand that you'll never be the same. But you, 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 you cannot allow yourself to stay in that place with the hurt. Because not every woman is like that. Not every woman is like that. And then... um. Matthew said, yep, I remember you tell me that all the time. I said, yeah, Matthew, look how, look, look on how they move and act. So now PA said, I can smell them from a mile away now, but it took countless sad and bad days to learn that lesson. Wish I never learned it. It may have cost me more than I can imagine, but I'm glad I'm still here. And I get it. And I do appreciate you being vulnerable. Ladies, if you don't know what this is right now, this is a man putting his shit out there to make us understand that men go through things too. Men hurt too. You know, I, you know, Gary, back in the day, I used to forget that men had feelings and emotions. I had to learn that. I was like, yeah, y'all, y'all feel like a, but y'all are taught from little boys, suck it up. That's right. Yeah. Boys don't cry. Yeah. But that's not a good thing because then y'all men tend to hold things back and not share. And we don't know what's going on with you. I always told my son, you have permission to express yourself and say anything you want. Just keep in mind who the fuck you talking to and be <laughs> respectful. Right, 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 right. And, and my son, and I, I said it in the last week's show, my son has checked me and said, mom, Let's take it down a notch. Let's go regroup and talk about this tomorrow. I had no choice but to respect that. Because you know what? If he had the balls enough to say that to me, I had to have enough respect to show him that his thoughts and his feelings value too. See, us as parents, we tend to forget that little people have feelings and emotions too. Mm -hmm. It's not always you make decisions and then, you know, you have to sometimes talk to your kids and you have to explain why you're doing the things that you're doing and Agreed. do mental and do mental check ins. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Agreed. You know, and then um, hold on. I, guys, I put the link in. I put the link in again. If you guys want to click in and give us and get, um, get up here and talk. Oh, and PA said, give me a minute. So he's probably getting um all, all all handsome and everything. Oh well, he said um hold on, gotta power up my Mac. 
I'm on the Lynx computer now. No problem. We'll be here. I got a couple more. I got a couple more um show um links to um what is it? What is it? What is this? A couple Video clips to show. Clips. Yep. And then I got here Latika say hi Grace. How are you doing, honey? Welcome to the show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I appreciate you coming in. If you have anything to say, if you want to come up here, you guys, you don't have to be on camera. You can simply press stop cam when I let you in. And look, you, we can hear you, but we don't have to see you. Now, I have to see you before I let you in because I got to see who you are and make sure you're not a troll. And I welcome trolls because trolls, you know, trolls make, make things exciting sometimes. <laughs> yeah, You know? So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and show another clip while PA gets his, his shit together. So give me just a moment. Because as everybody knows, I'm building this plane while we flying it. Right now, we sold plane. <laughs> right now, we sold plane airlines. I'm trying yeah. to get to. I'm trying to get to be like JetBlue, but mm -hmm. right now it's soul plane. Okay, I don't even. I don't even have an intro. Oh, and I didn't mean to say this. Um, I know Gary, we're working on someone, but if, yeah. you know, if anybody has skills on editing or making a good intro. I would really appreciate it if you hit my DMs because I am not computer savvy and I want a nicer intro, but I'll get it when I get it. I'm being patient. I'm just not allowing it to stop me from doing what I need to do. Right, right, right. Got gotcha. you. Know, gotcha. Right now, all y'all getting is a countdown and me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got for y'all right now. But until things progress... You know, right now I have a, a fun, a hard drive fun that I'm working on. So, you know, if you guys, if it moves you, hash, mm -hmm. you know, money sign, embrace the grace 23. But, you you know, I would also appreciate the like, sub and share. That's just as good. So let me let me get together another video, guys. Hold, hold on one second. Share screen. Um, share. For mother to sit in the front seat. Okay, if we're dating, you're my girlfriend, and my mom's in the car. Your ass is in the back. <laughs> okay. But once you're age, you're my number one priority now. You're my number one girl in my life. You feel me? Wow. I understand that. You're my number one over my mom because I married you for a reason. See, that, and yeah. then now you can sit in the front seat and I'll keep my mom's <laughs> to the back. <laughs> That's a solid answer. I'm gonna do I'm the same thing, it. but if we're married. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No disrespect, right? But just like she's my mom. Like she's mom. Both of those. Like, yeah. I love my mom, right? Listen, I hope there's no beef between them two. <laughs> like, Bro, what if they're my clashing? mom? If they're clashing, what if you come they, home now? They, you gotta argue with your wife because yeah. your wife's all like, she's like, you're really gonna put me in the back with your mom, and now yes, you just cause an argument with your wife. I'm gonna say yes, I will. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you expect your wife or mother to sit in the front? Your ass is in the back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My mom's in the front. But once I give you the key. <laughs> Damn, I was mute. I'm muted. Now, can you yeah. tell the difference? Between the mama's boy, yeah, 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 and the yeah. real and, and the real man. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. my mama. I'm just gonna get it. And then the other one said, "No, if you're just a girlfriend. Your ass is getting in the back of the seat. But if I <laughs> gave you the keys to the kingdom, and you're my wife, do you see that? Do you see yes. the different mindset? And I'm like, wow. And that kid was pretty young. Yeah. So that means he was taught. He was taught the value of marriage because for him to speak the way that he did he 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 he's he's been going he's been to church somebody taught him about that <laughs> somebody and the other one was, exactly and the other one was like oh no that's my mommy i'm letting her in the front that yeah. <laughs> yeah really okay, yeah, when, yeah. Mommy, when mommy dies who's still gonna be there yeah right right <laughs> oh man we have to learn to let go. 
And yeah. it really does start with us mothers because they're not going to let go if we're still holding on tight. Yeah, yeah. And I know that I'm going to have to come to that realization one day. You know, I only have one and he's a boy and he's my only one. Mm. So that's going to be a double hard for me. But oh, yeah, I've even tried to justify Gary. And I know this is kind of um, morbid, but I think about things like this. I said, well, how will I feel if I was ever to lose my son? Mm -hmm. And the way I have justified it to myself, I mean, I, I could I could say this all day until it happens. But if I train myself now, think about it, guys. Children are a blessing. They are a gift from God. So God gave me this beautiful son. He entrusted me with this boy to raise him, educate him, house him, teach him life. But at the end of the day, he never belonged to me. He belonged to God. Okay. So as a result, if God calls him, and, I, and my faith is as strong as it is, I'm not saying that I should be okay with it, but I should be okay with it because he never belonged to me in the first place. He belonged to God. Is it going to be hurtful? Of course. Is it painful? Of course. And sometimes the worst deaths are the ones that come out of nowhere. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if God calls your loved ones, it's their time. God wants well, them back. I, and I again, think, guys, yeah. again, I know it's easier said than done. You know, I could sit here all day and say this, you know, trust God's will, trust the process. And I know the pain is going to still be there. But at the end of the day, he was a gift given to me by God. And if God wants his ass back, then he could take them back. All righty now, I got PA Texas in the house. <laughs> How you doing, sir? You know I had to fire up the lights. Oh, I was supposed to go red today. Ah, maybe, you can stay maybe blue, though, because blue's my favorite color. Actually, it's white with a black light. <laughs> okay. So, PA, introduce yourself. Tell people where we can find you. Um, I think you're still working on something. But just introduce yourself and tell the people who you are and what you got going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm PA Texas. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start broadcasting, but I'm not. I'm gonna probably be more uh, as far as I'll, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not opposed to you know talking about relationships. You know, because I mean, I've like I said, I've been through a lot. I'm I'm almost 50 years old, so I mean, I can I can I can relay some game on that. But I, uh, my main thing, I'm gonna start broadcasting, uh, which I haven't really. Sta I've started on it, but I haven't really start getting the videos edited because it's a it's a long process. Is I'm a software developer and I want to teach people how how what I've learned since I was a child, and so that's what I'm gonna get to. Nice. So I'm I'm not ready yet, so I can't broadcast anything. But I mean, y'all can hit me here on YouTube. I mean, I think I have one video with somebody stealing my barbecue pit out the back off the back porch. But you know, you can like that if you want. But I just put it there to show somebody else. I forget why. But that's. But anyway, so. Well, I'll be, anyway, I'll be so go ahead. I want to hear everything you got to say about this conversation we're having tonight. Oh yeah, I'll let you know. Oh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't mind opening myself up and being vulnerable. I tell you, uh, yeah, I, it's really. I, I say it's one, but it was one, and then it was another one that I dealt with that wasn't quite as bad, but was really like, okay, it's more people out here like that than I thought. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, and and after that, I really, really gave some really great ladies a lot of a lot of BS. But I'm talking about straight bullshit. I apologize to them if they see this again and they know who I am, because they 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 know me. I apologize again. I, I was in, I was in a bad spot. I, I gave them a lot of stuff that they did not have. I mean, they didn't deserve. You know. Because of what that. because of what you've been. And you know what? That's a normal reaction. A lot of us do it. We unpack our bullshit to the next person. I'll put you on the screen. You, you know, and at the end of the day, it's no, it's nobody's responsibility but our to to unpack our own shit. Now they can help you fold and put stuff away 
and lighten the baggage. But at the end of the day, it's our responsibilities to become better version of ourselves. And sometimes when you are with that person, you learn from them and you, and you, and you, and you learn how to react to things differently. Like perfect example. My dad is, was an old school Sicilian man. And he always used to tell me every action has a reaction. And I've come to learn that no, and I wish he was still alive so I can tell him, dad, no, you're wrong. Sometimes a reaction is no, a, a no reaction is a reaction. You don't have to react to everything. I said, I would tell him that's your Sicilian crazy shit you got going on. Okay. Everything deserves a reaction. No, sometimes silence is the best killer. That, that kills people when you don't go back and forth with them. When you don't Absolutely. It does. Their, it does. When you don't entertain their bullshit, you know, oh. they want to send three page essays. <laughs> <laughs> but as yeah. soon as you call them, they don't pick up the phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. I said earlier, people like to hide behind text. They like to hide behind text and instant guys, messaging look, and messaging. I was, yeah. I was guilty of that too. My ex hated that shit. I would text him and keep texting him. And, and then he, and I knew that, you know, he worked overnight. So I would be going through my shit while he's sleeping. So he finally blocked my ass. <laughs> he, he, he's like, I'm not dealing with you. You sleep at night while I'm at work. And while you're at work, I'm sleeping. And you want to send me these three page texts? No, we're going to talk now. Mm -hmm. And I had to, you, you see, guys, I don't talk. I don't come up here and just talk my shit. I don't come up here and judge anybody because I've been through it too. I've gone through my shit. I've had to learn the hard way of things. I've had, to, I'm an advocate for men and men are the most people that have hurt me the most, but I'm not going to stop loving on y'all. I'm not yeah, going to, I'm not going to stop respecting y'all. I'm not going to stop honoring y'all because at the end of the day, I know, I know that we all need men to survive. A man can live without a woman, but a woman cannot live without a man. And I know this, and I've seen it. And a lot of women with this, they got tricked with this feminism bullshit that we're equal. We're not equal, ladies. We're not equal to a man. Because if we're equal, then we're not the, then we're not the same. We're not the same in so many different ways. But, you know, they've been tricked. Yeah. I mean, I've I've heard a lot of stuff. I mean, I've I've heard some of the most most asinine shit from women who are I guess you could call a feminist. Uh I, I can get into that later, but it's it's comical next to you know, next to comical. It is. Uh, it is. And, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just gonna say, like, I mean, I I'm willing to say why I put why I put mother why I put my mom first. Well, me and my mom, uh, we've been through, we went through a lot. So, and she, she had to lean on me at a young age, a very young age. And I pretty much was the man, I was the man of the house pretty much as soon as my dad left when I was seven. And another man came in and I'm pretty, I pretty much had to hold her down through that bullshit. So uh, personally, I mean, I can't speak on anybody else as far as their mother. Their mother may not be shit, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm a, I, my mother's a scientist. And you know her genetics came through me. I'm a computer scientist. You know, you know it does. You know the apple doesn't fall far from the bush. Uh, my mother said my dad was probably smarter than her, but she'll never know because he drank too much. Yeah. While I'm sitting here sipping on tequila, by the way, but that's neither here nor there. Uh oh, we all know why. Last night, yeah, why I was yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Let's go get started. No <laughs> worries. Yeah, when, when you get to that level, let me know. We'll have to switch over to the after party because that <laughs> shit was crazy yesterday. I mean, you were speaking a lot of truth. And you yeah. saw that I didn't disagree with you. I just didn't jump on it right away. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I just don't want to disrespect right. people's platform. But I mean, I just call it how I see it. You know, you know, I speak, I speak the truth even to the detriment of myself. You know, if I have to. And my mother taught me that. See, it's, you know, so I mean, uh, my mother also taught me to be a good person, even though, uh, 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 even though I've, you know, I've, I've veered away from that here and there. But for the most part, I, I've I've pretty much stayed the course. Uh, but women taught me how to call somebody a fucking bitch. Damn. 
And shut up, bitch. You don't know shit. I learned that from up uh, from women. I didn't even talk like that around my, you know, my mother didn't even teach me to talk like that. And I'll kick you in your throat. You come over here fucking with me. You know, you think you can whoop my ass? Come on. You know, that didn't they, come from mama. They act like men. And and, yeah. and they act like men. They square up to men. I'd have been super socked by a chick. She, I was seeing stars. She hit hard. You know Damn. what I'm saying? She hit hard. I look, had a Bugs Bunny hickey on the back of my on back of my head. And she know who she is. I was sitting there pissing, and she had wrecked. She had wrecked. I had wrecked my car. I I drove at the time. I drove a very luxurious car. I don't want to speak on it because I don't like that's tacky. But it was a very luxurious car, and I've been driving for years. And I spent so much money on that car, so I'm gonna ride it to the wheels fall off. But somebody rear-ended me in Houston in the Galleria area. And I cried when I got hit. I literally cried. I was like, man, I'm gonna miss this car. Because he, I mean, he took pushed the whole back end almost into me. But anyway, mm -hmm. I, you know, I got home, she started talking BS like you sitting over there crying over a car. I was like, Yeah, you ain't dropping a hundred thousand dollars on it. That's why you sitting over there talking shit, you know. But I'm finna go get a uh so karma comes a week later, she wrecks her car. So I go and I was like, well, I only have X amount of dollars to buy this car. It's not going to be like that car, but it's going to be nice, whatever, whatever. I'm going to let you drive it because I can catch the train to go ahead, run, do what I do. I, it was a train that stayed where we were and it went straight mm -hmm. downtown. And most of my business I was handling was downtown. But anyway, long story, long story shorter, we go, uh, we go uh, get the car. Actually, the car was still in. Well, if I say what country it was in, y'all gonna know what kind of car it is. It was still in a foreign country, right? When I bought it, and I bought it. So they gave me a loaner until the car came here because I had wrote a check for the car, paid cash for it. Okay. Computer science is it is what it is. You be able to do certain things like that. But anyway, that's it is what it is. Those classes are hard, and when you get out, and y'all computer science kids, make make them people pay you well. But anyway. It's neither here nor there. So I get we get back to the place we were staying together. Actually, we had we had to stay together because we didn't have no car. So I was just like, hey, let's just you know let me stay at your place. I'm gonna pay all your bills so I can just you know catch the train. You can do this, do that, blah blah blah. blah. So anyway, we we drop fast forward. We drive back from the dealership in a loaner car. She's like, stop, she stop and get something to eat. So we stopped by a little fast food restaurant. She had the car smelling like chicken and French fries. And I was like, hey, you know, let me get a scratch on the car before you start eating it, right? You know, because I felt a certain type of way about dropping all that money on a mm -hmm. on a very depreciative asset. I, I knew, you know, you always make that mistake. I was like, let me get a scratch on the car or something like that. You know, she's like, oh, motherfucker, you, 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 you sit there, you leave your Gucci jeans in the middle of the floor after you finish taking a bath and taking a pee. I was like, you could talk. So I went, I was like, I'm going to go take a pee right now. And uh, you could talk till you're blue in your face, till you're blue in the face. Don't eat no chicken in my motherfucking car. As as I'm releasing my, my <laughs> releasing urine in the toilet, all I hear was, fuck you. <laughs> she hit me and I, you know, and I went forward and I, I saw stars. I mean, she hit pretty hard. She hit, I'd have been mm -hmm. in fights with many men and she hit harder than most of them. Now, I'm going to keep that a buck. You know, I ain't gonna say most. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say at least 20% of them. She had harder than them. Now, I did have my back turn. I ain't see it coming. So I didn't have no you know, chance to let it roll or anything, you know. Uh, and and most of, the, most of the fights I got into were before the age of 21. Mm-hmm. But she hit harder than them cats, man. I was like, God. But the thing is, you were expected to just walk away and deal with that because God forbid if you was to, to turn around and sock her, who you think they're gonna take to jail? Well, I, you know, I didn't care. I, I, you know, I didn't care. I mean, I, I, I'll, you know, you, you hit me, you, you know, you didn't, you know, I, I, you know, you, you want to walk down that path, you finna get it. Anybody can get it, man, woman, or child. Sorry, that's just how I'm wired. So I turned around and picked her up and threw her on the bed. The bed had to have been, let me see, had to have been about, about 15 feet away. This is how pissed off I was. And she wasn't a small lady. 
She one hopped the bed and hit the window, almost went out the window. Boom! <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna get the fuck away from your ass. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I picked, I picked up, I picked up it, all the little belongings that I had. I had some stuff there. I picked up the little belongings that she's like, no, it can't end like this. I was like, oh yes, it is. yes, it can, and it has. And I was like, I was like, you get away from me, cause uh, right now I'm not in the mood. You, you, you know, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna do some real damage to you. So yeah, me. because if that took place over a conversation with some chicken in yeah. the car, imagine if it was something serious. That you, you see what I'm saying? And and that is why I try to talk to women. You know, I I, I saw a post on Facebook a couple of weeks ago about you know men putting their hands on women. And we always teach our, our boys, keep your hands to yourself and don't touch girls. But what we need to do is touch, teach women to keep their hands to themselves and stop touching and stop touching men. Because I'll tell you something right now. Let's let a woman put his hands on my son. All he got to do is call one number and five of us are going to pick up. And all his titties are pulling up. We pulling up. Dominica. <laughs> Hey, hey, don't. <laughs> I said, don't put your hands on her. You just call that one number. You call that bat phone, and we're yes. we're gonna and we're gonna be there. You and he carries a he carries a bails bond business card in his wallet. I said, yeah. just in case, Mama gets us in a jam, you call your titties yeah. and you give them this number and you come get me yeah, because you pretty, know what? I, that pretty I told face. You, Go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I never. If you, I said to, I said to him, do not. That's why I tell him, keep your keys and your phone in your pants, so you can just get up and leave. Don't get too comfortable. It, it, it's just, it's just so many things, but we have to teach our kids. And as well, I know I teach my son to read the red flags early on. Don't ignore them. The red flags are there for a reason. I don't care how good that coochie is. Don't get misled by the little head, okay? Because a, a woman can, well, people can be detrimental to a person's life with some bullshit, calling the cops, mm -hmm. calling, you know, um, lying on them. I've seen people's lives be ruined over some lies, especially women, and there are no repercussions to the women. And we need mm -hmm. to change that. PA, remember we were talking about when I asked a question about, you know, if you guys want change, who is responsible for making these changes? Gary, that was a good conversation I was having last night on another gentleman's podcast. And I'll okay. give him a shout out, JVJ Network and JVJ Let's Talk, because he be having a lot of good conversations. And he talks a lot about accountability. Who, who, Who's responsible for making change and making things better right now? Because shit is not good right now, Gary. So who do you who do you think it's up to to change things and make things better? The men uh, or the women? <laughs> um, well, there needs to be men that step up and be real men. Um, and then there also needs to be women that step up and be um, accountable. Like, I mean, there's, you know, um, unfortunately, the world that we live in now Nobody wants to be accountable. Nobody wants to communicate. Nobody wants to take responsibility and stuff like that. So, but it's going to take, you know, the real men, if you will, and the real women to come together to really set, you know, to, to really make a serious, a serious change. Now it can't be no, you know, attitudes and things like that. Um, you know, that's not going to work. And it, and, Look, change is not going to be easy. I think for the most part, for those men that step up, you know, if you're alpha dominant male and you put your foot down and say, this is what it needs to be, and, you have, and you're morally grounded, then, you know, people, people are going to follow. Um, but that's not, but un unfortunately, enough of that is not happening, right? So, but if, but if there was more men like that, and there was more women that followed suit, then yeah, then things could things could work out to be a whole lot better. And and yeah. I agree with you. And that's why I always say, men, you need to start taking your first of all, you need to start knowing your worth. 
and you need to start taking the head of the table and sitting at the head of the table. See, I think women have been behaving so badly and recklessly because men have been silent. They're, they're, they just don't want to deal with it. Men want peace. So look, a, lot women, of, a lot of men, go ahead. A lot, what I've seen in my experience and what I've learned is that women, if they know that they could push a guy to a certain point, They'll do shit to men that that they'll do things to certain men that they know they can get away with. Mm -hmm. Right? You're I see right. it happen. I'm not gonna deny it. I'm not. I, gonna I deny see it, it time and time again because once they once they come across a dude that they know that I'm not gonna do that to him or they're not gonna fuck with that dude like that because shit's gonna get really real. They're not gonna. But women will do it to dudes that know that's not going to do anything back, right? They know that there's not going to be any type of serious or major consequence, right? And I think it needs to be instilled in some of these women that, hey, like, yo, you can't, like, to me, for a woman to even think about hitting me, she out of her fucking mind. Like, she out of her fucking mind. Like, yo. Know, like and look, I'm not gonna hit it. I I'm not gonna hit her back. But trust me, I got a couple that's ready, right? But but the respect has to be there where they know that I'm not fucking with Gary like that. Like he don't play that shit, right? I always like to say this. Here is my here is here is here is my no, example. Like here is my example. Uh. You and your girlfriends are out having drinks, dinner, and okay. you know it's three of you, it's maybe four of y'all, and each of the girls, they're saying, "Oh well, you know, uh, I could do whatever I want, and my man doesn't say anything." And you know, the next one says it, "Yeah, I could, I could do whatever I want. My man, he's not gonna complain." I always say my lady is the one that says Gary don't play that shit. And you and you're right because women know who the simps are and who exactly. the alpha males are and who the alpha males are. And I'm a woman and I know how to I know how to finesse. I know how to finesse. I know how to tap into a man's weakness and get what I want. But the only thing is that I've always been I never really had ill will intentions. You know, I've never been that. Have I been a player before? Absolutely. Have I gotten things out of men that I needed and wanted? Absolutely. Well, Grace but says I, ill will. No, because if they offer and it's reciprocated, and if it's reciprocated, because I'm not just a taker, I'm also a giver. Most women are very selfish. And all they know how to do is take, 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 take. I always make sure I give back so they don't feel like it's one-sided. See, that's the difference. Now- That is the difference. Okay, let me give you an, okay, let me, you're right. Let me give you an example of an ill will thing. When I was in college, I had a guy that his only position was to feed me. And it took him six months to figure out that. I wasn't feeling that's him ill anymore. Will. Yeah, you're right. You're you're absolutely right. But yeah. I did give him my time. But you in college I, and you hungry, so yep. you can yeah. get a you can get a small <laughs> mulligan on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, because you went to school and you did say which school you went to last yeah, night because yeah, yeah. I paid attention. And but the thing is, I gave him my time. I would spend two three hours with. I mean, I ain't giving no cooney. But at least I gave him my time and I spent with him. And did I lead him on? Yeah, of I did. Of course, you had to. But it was six months. It took you six months to figure it out? <laughs> no, nah, man. Look, man, I've been, I've had some hungry days in college. I used to call McDonald's and say, hey, y'all messed up my McDoubles. I'm allergic to onions my and you put onions on it. And never ordered shit. And they would say, come up here and get your two McDoubles. And boom, free. You, you know what? You have. You just have to learn how to work the system. But I think mm -hmm. that men and women are taught to use and be selfish. 
But it's up to you men to see those red flags. And if you let yourself get used and taken advantage of, you have to take some accountability because of that. And, you know, a lot of men get pussy whooped and a lot of women get digmatized and the lines get blurred. But I had to learn, even in the breakdown of my marriage, I had to take accountability that I was part of the breakdown of the marriage too. And, you know, that took me to go to therapy and counseling and unpacking my shit. It wasn't just all his fault. I remember the conversations when he would tell me, oh, you're coaching too much. Because I, I coach basketball. I've been coaching for 19 oh, years. And he was like, you're not spending enough time with me. You're out here working. You coach basketball. You do this. And I ignored it. I ignored the red flags. And that's when the marriage started breaking down. But you see, of course, you don't see that when you're in the inside of it. It's always when you're on the outside looking in. But at least I was willing to learn and take accountability. I had one of my homeboys sit me down and said, you know what? You're not fucking perfect. And you're not the easiest person to get along with. And you have some type of responsibility. You can't just blame it all on him. And, and I sat in that. I sat mm -hmm. in that. And I thought about it. And I'm like, damn, he's right. You, you know, I wasn't perfect. I, I still don't agree that he had to do what he did to end the marriage. I mean, he stepped out. Not once. And I forgave him for the first one. But the second time, nah, bro, you got to go. <laughs> you, you, you know, I believe in giving a person a second chance and trying to fix it. But after the second I time. I don't. Oh, you, you're a one strike deal? I, 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 I kind of agree with him. I'm like, you ain't yeah, I don't. Do one strike. You could. So you, we talking about baseball. So what do you <laughs> in New York? I'm a New York Yankees girl. Okay. So in the Bronx. Like you, you sitting in Yankee Stadium. You in a boogie down. I used to hang out over mm -hmm. there, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in that area over there by 160, 161st or something. Oh, yeah, yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. You, I still hang out over there. I still go over there and chop it up with my Latinos over there. Yeah, all you gotta do, you know, you, you so when you play baseball, I used to play baseball, by the way. Um, uh, when you know, there's a check swing. If you mm -hmm. check swing, you out of here. That's it. That's a wrap. All right, that's all I got to do is you got to. Okay, that's, that's because it. you're old. That's because you're older now and your tolerance level is like this. But when you were younger, you didn't talk like that. Well, I didn't you, know. I didn't but know. When, we, didn't when know. we were younger, we didn't know. But obviously, as you have experience in life and, and, and you get older, then you clearly know what the deal is and you. Uh, at a certain point, uh, like, I feel like if I didn't talk to you about something or if we didn't discuss something and you went and did it, like, um, okay, let's, so if my lady goes out and if, she, if we're in a relationship and she goes and steps out on or let's say we're married and she goes out and steps out on a marriage, then yeah, I'm not, there's no, I'm done. Yeah, but most men are. You guys are not built. You guys are not, maybe if I would have spent $10,000 or maybe I would have crashed the car, you can forgive all that. But the one thing that y'all men cannot get over is that, and women need to understand that. Well, I'm a little different. I, I'm a little different. You mess with my money, I you mess with my money, it's like it's like shooting me with a bullet. Don, don, I don't play that. See, and that's the thing with that little with the with the with the with what I talked about earlier about the lady eating the chicken in the car. Mm -hmm. I it was the money. You know, people say, "Oh, it's not about the money." With me, it's about the money because I you're making from, it clear. Yeah, it's it's about the money with me. I will leave your ass if you fuck with my money. I will throw you like I like I don't even know you. And if you fuck with it too hard, I will kill your ass. I don't okay. I don't play. Okay. I don't play with cash. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't. It's just, and I know it's just pieces of paper, but for what I had to do to get there, I I don't come from a lot. And my mother doesn't come from a lot. We from backwoods, Mississippi. I moved to Texas when I was six months old. 
Bro, that's my mommy. She's she, she's gonna live forever. <laughs> she just texted me. Sorry, uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's all on the same. I got my whole setup here. I don't okay. know. Y'all can see y'all can see the reflection on the glass. All these lights, that screens. You good? Your mom, your mama's ears are burning. That's why she texted you. Well, uh, no, no, yeah. Well, now nah, you know me and my mom also business partners. You know we 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 try to we try to grow our family's fortune uh, together. Uh, and she's she, she does a very good job with it, and so do I. But anyway, that's neither of that. So, um, so man, I lost my. You're talking about money. Yeah, Somebody yeah. Somebody messing so, with your money. She, was sit, she sit over there and 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 poo pooed on something that I just dropped. Seventy grand. Oh, I'm sitting here talking about the money figures. That kind of money on, and be like, oh, it's just eat chicken in it. And I'm like, uh, you know, you know, that kind of money is that kind of money, and you know, let me. You know, let me just get. I mean, the same day I cut the check. I mean, the same hour, if I'm not mistaken. And like, you let me chicken. Yeah, let me, let me, you know, let me, let me go through the phases of grief first of dropping that kind of. Cause I, I mean, I come from the mud, Mississippi, where people ain't got nothing. Come to Port Arthur, Texas, and they ain't got much more. And then after that, I go, I go to college, and then I. Make something out of myself to get that kind of money. I had to ace test. I had to have people say, niggas don't do computer science. You know what I'm saying? I had to go through the rigmarole of all of that. I was there. I'm never going to forget that. So when I think of the stuff that I had to do to get the stuff that I had, that I got, I feel a certain type of way about that. And I don't want nobody to play with that because it took... It took a, it took a, it took my life's work to do that. Okay. And somebody's gonna poo poo on that. I'm gonna sit there and call. I'm gonna mark you as the enemy. And once I mark you as the enemy, it's a wrap. And that's your thing, and you're okay. You see, nobody should have to shame you or make you feel bad about that because that's who you are, and that's your story. And if she can either accept it or reject it. Yeah, and if you're on board. I don't mind sharing what I've done with you. I don't mind. Not at all. You know, oh, sweetie, you and you know, but at the same time, it's also things that go on in my head, like, okay, you're you're the guy that you sleep with every night is one of the top computer scientists on the planet. You can't make money with him except for asking him for money. Something's wrong with him. Yep. <laughs> and then you're gonna sit there and poo-poo on what I've already accomplished. So to you, you see it as a lack of a, a lack of respect, respect. And very disrespectful. Just like a man would look at um, cheating, stepping out of the marriage. There's there, everybody has their deal breakers. As right. long as you make them clear at the beginning and you have effective communication about yes. it. Well, that's yeah. Well, see, I like to say in the beginning, I like to give my fair my fair warnings, right? So in the beginning. Here's what it is. You can't say I didn't tell you. Uh-huh. You can't say I didn't tell you. So I give my fair yeah. warnings in the beginning. We'll have the conversation, the long talk. You know, it'll take maybe a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but I give my fair warning. So now you know. And it's so crazy. When, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. So now, so now you know. So when something happens and I respond a certain way, don't say I didn't tell you. Exactly. Don't and, say I didn't tell you. And right. the funny thing is that men get shamed. You know, we're allowed to say, I want a money, I want a man with money, I want a man that's over six feet tall, I want a man this, this, and this. But God forbid if a man says, I don't like fat chicks. He's a, it's okay. If he doesn't like fat chicks, he should be able to, it should be okay for him to say that and not be reprimanded for that. That's your preference. That's, that's your preference. You know, I don't date Spanish guys. And a lot of people are surprised. Oh, but you're Dominican. How can you not? That's my preference. I don't like, you, you know, I prefer, I can't say I don't like, I don't, I don't prefer Spanish guys. You know, I have another preference. But we shouldn't be made feel bad because of that. Yeah, I, I, and that's one thing that I say should be an exclusion in race. 
like in race in racial in racial um what is it appetites i don't know if you have a you know a racial preference should not be uh should not be applied to what your uh, preference in a mate is if you like you're white right. guys if you like white guys and you're a black lady it's not racist <laughs> if that's what you like and it, you know if that's what you like it's not racist because you you know or tall guys or you like old guys or you like fat guys or you like skinny guys I you know I don't think that that should be applied to whatever your purpose is as far as what your what your natural urges are with however you got to, to however you got to these natural urges whether you watch too much tv or somebody of a certain uh physical makeup rocked your world and you want somebody similar to that bam you know hey but baby, men get men get sh men get shamed a lot for that when they yeah. voice their preferences oh it's definitely a double standard because i mean it's it's and that's not cool no, it, it, it's definitely not. Like, women could say they want the guy, six-foot guy with the abs and stuff like that, but the moment a guy says, you know, he wants a, I don't know, a swimsuit model, then it's like, oh, then it, then it, then it's a problem. You're shallow. Oh, you're this right. and you're that. So, so it's a double. They, it's give a double they give me hell. My preference is Spanish women. I don't care if they, what color they are. I don't care if they're white as snow or black as tall. If they speak some Spanish and they from one of them little countries down there, <laughs> I, I've had some experience with it with a couple of them, and it was only two. That that's my preference, and I mean, black ladies, I'm sorry, but for something that they do, I really, really like both of them. <laughs> so what, you know? And if you don't like it, hey, get over it because you can't whoop my ass. And, and, you're, and, and, you're, and you're entitled to have your preferences, but yeah, it's crazy. Right, you can have your preferences. Like, like I've I've never been one to like I feel like whoever you like, that's your business. Like, I'm not gonna be mad at whoever you like, but it's interesting that you get some women that'll they'll be upset and mad because of this is your preference. It's like, wait a minute, I'm not mad at who you about who you who you like or what your preference is. So it just gives you an idea on how how I guess the the mentality of some people. It's like, oh, it's good for you, but not me, right? Exactly. Look, you want to live a hyper life of hell? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll no, I just want to introduce my queen. I am Shalom um, Shalomikia. She is awesome, guys. She is another queen out here on these YouTube streets, advocating for the black man. And it's sad that a couple days ago, because of what she's doing and her great work, guys, go check out her work. She was, her business was threatened. Her life was threatened. All because she's out here advocating for the black man and letting women know that their foolishness is no longer tolerated. And, and, and. I, I latched on to her because she's she's doing the exact same thing that I'm trying to do. But like I was telling you last night, PA, I get a lot of flack in the in the back end. Oh, yeah. but you're not even black and you're talking about black issues. It's not a black issue. Do I advocate more for the black men? Absolutely. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Because that's my preference. But it's it's really a human thing. All across the board, we were behaving badly and recklessly. And I'm simply just trying to turn the mirror on women to dinner. Because at the end of the day, we don't value or respect or appreciate men enough, especially our black men. And when I break it down to women and I'd be like, oh, you think Kevin Samuels was bashing women, was, was bashing you? But you don't even appreciate men. She was like, I don't need no man. Da -da -da. I said, really? Oh, okay, yeah. so you see that car you're about to get into and go home with? Who do you think built that car? You see that yeah. house you're living in? Who do you think built that car? When the lights go out in the middle of a hurricane, who getting on them buckets all the way up there and fixing the lights so your ass can have hot water to take a hot bath in? 
See, they don't think that deep. They only look at the trees in front of them. They don't look at the whole forest. I said, when your punk ass run out of run out of gas in the middle of the road, is it going to be a bunch of women that's going to get out their car and help you push their car to the gas station? No, it's going to be men. When you call 911, 90% of the time, who shows up? When your house is on fire, 90% of the time, who shows up? It's always a mechanic is a man. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. We we just we just we just gotta do better. She sprained her she ankle. She came back and said, Go ahead, also, you have a black son, and I thank you for what you do. Absolutely, hon, because like I told you, I want to enjoy the latter part of my life with whatever man God blesses with me. I want my son to be happy with his wife and his kids. I don't want to catch no charge. So if I could change the a mindset of one, of one, <laughs> of mm -hmm. one woman, then I've done, I've done, I've served my purpose. And that's all I'm trying to do up here is just trying, trying, trying for us to do better. Cause if we do better, we're supposed to know, and no, if we know better, we're supposed to do better. That's that operative word. Everybody said, if you know better, you do better. Yeah. That's, you know, what's understood shouldn't have to be explained. But the thing is people know better and they still don't do better. So that's why I put but, that word in it. If you know better, you're supposed to do better. Supposed to do better. No you do better, you live better. Ab absolutely. So I, my girl, my queen, you keep doing what you're doing. Fuck them hoes. They, they just hating on you, you know, because you, you're doing something good. It's always the people that are trying to make a difference and trying to do good and trying to uplift us are the ones that always get shitted on. Look at MLK, look at Malcolm X, even Jen A. Kennedy, he was for us. And look what happened to him. You know, yeah. well, you know, there's a look at there's Kennedy. a there's a uh there's a there's a saying by uh Niccolo Machiavelli. He says the more good you do, the more people are gonna hate you. Yeah. You're, you're yeah, absolutely I mean, right. Dude, people don't like people doing good, man. Nah, yeah, really? I mean, and and uh and uh uh Lil Boosie, man, the the great philosopher uh Lil Boosie said, and it's the people that are around you who are gonna hate you the most. And that's sad. You keep get your killed. enemies close, but your family, your friends even closer. All these rappers you keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All these rappers and all these people, they get killed in their own city. Yep. Yep. They get killed in their own city. Right? Nipsey got killed by somebody been knowing Nipsey a long time. Yep. yep. And then yeah. you wonder why you, people leave the hood and go to the suburbs, but then they get called a sellout. But when they do come back to their neighborhood, they get killed. Man, that's so got to be smart, man. Huh? It's being smart, man. I, I, you know, I'm from Port Arthur, Texas, man. I, I, you know, I could go back there because most of the, it's been so long. Uh, but if if I if if, if somebody did back there, there's people there that that I grew up with, and if I go down there and build and do something down there, I can just build anything. I'm like, look, I want to go back where I grew up. I'm finna build. People are gonna be like, oh, you got some money to build a house over here. They that you know, like 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 like. And I, you know, yeah, they're gonna be sitting there looking at me every day, cause you went to college. Yeah, and see, and every day they sit up there, and people are sitting over there like, man, he did it. You know, uh, what else? Boosie say like, man, you, they they sitting there. The man kid, the the man kids is listening to the man you went to middle school with. His kids listen to your music. You go outside, they sitting over there like, ooh. There go, there go his car. I want a car like him. Man, yeah, you but how that. did you get that car? What did you do to get that car? They, it, it, it don't matter. It's, but, he, but he didn't get the one of them got it. The other one didn't. The one that didn't is tired of hearing about the one that got it, cause they, cause they hear about it every day. And at some point, they just builds up envy and jealousy, and then after that, you finna get, you finna get dealt with. Absolutely. So that's why people, you got to move out. Once you, once you start getting anything, you got to go. And that's sad because it's like, it's just, it's the mentality of crabs in the pot. As soon as you make it to the top, somebody want to pull you down instead of trying to hang on and try to come over to out of the pot with that person. They want to pull you down. And, and that's why it, it kills me when people say, 
how are we going to get them to stop being racist against us if we can't get along ourselves? Black, I don't believe in Black Lives Matter because it seems like Black Lives only matter. Black lives should matter all the time, not only when a white cop kills a Black person. I, I have a different conversation. When I talk to a white person about, about Black Lives Matter, it's a totally different conversation when I talk to a Black person because is the value of a Black person only valuable when a police officer kills them? Uh, is that, it not valuable when another Black man kills another Black man? Man, that see, the, 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 the saying itself is great, but the actual organization being... Yep. Absolutely. I did Man, my research on that. It's all bullshit. Yeah. I mean, they were full of shit. I mean, they were some just of the lives horrible, matter. The most the most horrible women who ever walked the face of the earth is that lady that started that BLM movement. Yeah, I'm talking about her. You ain't she ain't shit. Giving money to go have gay parties. Nothing against gay people, but god damn, you're gonna take money for people putting bullets in people's heads just for walking down the street and go throw a party? Get the fuck out of here. You're, you're and absolutely then, right. And then, what, and then you sit there and do that, and now everybody on these conservative talk networks that's, that always want to shit on black people got more ammunition to shoot more bullets at us. Fuck yep. that bitch. I, <laughs> I <laughs> I want to say to um, Philip said, hello, Miss Embrace the Grace. Philip, thank you for your constant support as well. Just remember to like. Uh, I know you already subbed up, but just remember to like. So, guys, I got two more clips that I'm going to run. Um, PA, I'm not like Jay. I don't run three, four hours because most people attention span are not that long and they're mm -hmm. not going to watch a three, four hour show. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so I tried to keep it under an hour and a half, but sometimes if the conversation gets good, it gets good. But let me go ahead and present another video that I got for you guys. Give me just a minute. Let me do share. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Share. Oh, okay, I see it. Come on, come on in here, play. Are you familiar with the rules of shotgun when it comes to your car? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Whoever Some people calls, don't even know what shotgun is. Well, whoever calls shotgun gets to ride in the front seat, right? Yep. Well, for one man, it wasn't so simple. <laughs> oh, the Instagram site No Limit featuring a very annoyed man trying to settle a driving debate between his girl and his mama. Check it out. You're still complaining, though. Yes, I'm You're complaining. still complaining. My mom is sitting in the front, and that's why you're in the back. That's it. She What's the problem, though? I should be in the front. I'm well, shorty. Right. Okay, I'm you're my shorty. Front. She's my mother. All right, and I should be in the front. This is not just... This is my... It wasn't perfect. Can't be here. So and you... Because I'm not. Because she's oh, not. That's why. Because she's I'm not. not. Because the back is wet. She's not. Right now, as soon as the mom popped up, all the moms in the audience was like, "Yeah." Would you want to beat his wife? Was that? Do you think he made mama sit in okay. the front I'm and his wife sit in yeah. sit in the back? See, I'm with y'all. In my <laughs> culture, in Asian culture, you. I always put mom on my first, always. But that's me doing it. The, what? Her oh man. my gosh, these two over here. Oh, I don't going know. What's on, eh? eh? If, if, this, if, I'm, if I'm helping to pay for that car, I'm driving the car, put his mom in the front seat, put his ass in the back There we go. There's that ego again. So I can't do that. But yeah, because she can only get pookie. I will. She can only get pookie. So. I think there's something to be said about a wife and also encourages everyone yes. in his life to respect his wife. Yeah. So clearly, they're mad disrespectful in general. The mom is disrespectful. Wait, hold on. In, the, I, <laughs> in New York yes. City, are you there? Oh, a couple. Oh, it's a couple. What's your name? Hi, I'm Anna 
Anastasia, and this is Laurent, my fiance, and we're from the East Village. That's great. We were just talking about this couple having a discussion, an argument about his mother sitting in the front seat. She was sitting in the back seat. About to get married. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Who gonna sit in the front seat? His mama or you? <laughs> no, yeah, my sister. I can't stand her motherfucking ass. Actually, experienced the mother-in-law came um, to visit us. And I think it's just up to the man to respect both his wife and his mother. Just like Adrian said, it's like up to him to make instant. So what you <laughs> Who said where? I agree. I think that as a sign, as a sign of respect, what happened, uh, we ended up going to uh, out to eat as a sign of respect. It's just good. Who took the front seat? In order to show if both people Why is this such a big deal? I did. So, situation, I took the front seat because there's also grandchildren and other things. So, for them to get all in the back and be comfortable with each other. And I think it's all just situational. Like, if honestly, um, Asian culture, it's respectful to put. Yeah. Honestly, I am for my. I just asked. Yeah. yeah. I've been taught to respect my elders as well. Yeah. But what I always find is that my mom and my, my mother in law, they always say, to be up there. I want to play, you know, kids. Yeah. But you know why you offer it? Because That's she's like, respectful. I, I, makes you want to say, yeah. of course you can have the seat. Yeah. If that woman is cursing at you, I'm not giving you my seat. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, oh, they like arguing cursed. at each other. Everybody, bye, babies. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for calling me in New York. Too. There has to be mutual respect, respect. and yeah. then you can absolutely offer that say names. Bye, babies. <laughs> okay. So I go ahead and close this out. So again, I, I, you say, why is it a big deal? It's a big deal because people make it a big deal. It shouldn't be a big deal. And I said at the beginning of the show that I think I've, I, well, I didn't come up with this solution. A very good friend of mine came up with this solution and it's so simple. I, I asked him, okay, so what if this, and, and, I, and I know his, his mom is elderly. She's 74 years old. He drives a pickup truck, and if he comes to pick me up, you think I'm going to tell his mama to get out of the car so I can get in the front seat? I know my role. I know I'm his, I'm his wife, per se. You know what he said to me? He says, shit, I'm getting out of the front seat of the car, and you driving, and I'm going to sit in the back, and both of y'all can be in the front and feel important. Do you see how easy that was, ladies That's and gentlemen? Easy. Uh, or, but do or you see like how another, the man... Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, it's a late, it's a late, uh, it's a lady that I that I deal with uh, that's from Central America. I'm not gonna say anything specific. Uh, her and her mama get in the back seat and talk about how I'm driving. I be wanting to get out the car. I be like, well, y'all driving. I'm walking since y'all, you know, since, since y'all want to sit there and talk shit about me driving. You know what I'm saying? And they'll sit there and they'll say it's, they'll, they'll say it in their little native languages. Which they mix up two languages. You gotta learn how to speak. Understand. If you love Latin women, PA, you gotta learn how to speak Spanish. Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm, talk about your ass at the dinner table when you see, don't even see, know. Entonces hablo, hablo poquito, you know, más o menos, you know, it's, it's, it's it, it, you know, más o menos hablo poquito. So, poquito. but I, but so yo comprendo más de 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 yo hablo de de hablo. Okay. See, so, so you just be the silencer. You just be yeah, quiet. Yeah. Don't say nothing. Yeah, yeah. I I understand a lot better. You know, you know. And and I can get the gist of it. They just keep talking, and they, and they but they know if they talk fast and they mumble, they can get stuff by me. But that's that's that stop working. But they're sitting in the back, sitting there talking shit about me. I'll if if, if I wasn't a good dude, I would literally pull over the side of the road, side of the road, and walk. It's like yeah, I'll drive because can't none of can neither one of them drive. But they want to talk their shit. Yeah, they want to talk shit about. Oh, he's going too fast. Oh, he he's doing this. He's doing that. I hate that shit. But anyway, that's that's another story. But my point was is just by having this conversation with this gentleman, and he was like, "That's an easy one, Grace. Once yeah. I can pull up at your house and pick you up, you're gonna jump in the front seat. I'm gonna sit in the back, and y'all yeah. two have the front." But you see how the man took control of the yeah. situation, nipped it in the bud, yeah. 
yeah. and made us both feel just as important. And he sat his ass in the back and it's his car and he's yeah. making the payments and his ego wasn't bigger than the situation. He gave no. me, he, let's per se, we're dating. He gave me props that I was his lady and he gave his mother props that that was his mama. And, and it's solved. Yeah. You don't want to even. And, and then of course I said, well, what if my license is suspended and I can't drive? He was like, well, then you're going to have to sit your ass in the back because mm -hmm. if you can't drive, I said, well, you're right, because I'm not going to make your mom jump out of a, a pickup truck at 74 years old. Again, it comes down to respecting my elders. That's how I was raised. Age before beauty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you, you know what I'm saying? But there have been times when I was dating a guy and the mother would say, you want to sit up front? Yeah. And I'd be like, no, that's okay. I got the bag. Just the fact that she offered shows me that she's giving me the respect and I'm giving her respect right back. And again, it's all about, you know, I know I'm in eyes. If she's still in here, she said, why do we, why does it have to be about respect? It is about, it's it life, is about respect. Like, come on. Like, yeah. Samuels used like, to that's say, common, like respect is common sense. But then again, a lot of people don't have common sense. Common sense is not so common. Right. And, and like the, the my beloved Kevin Samuels used to say, life is about relationships. Everything in business and family. And you, you know, if I have I make sure I would never date a guy that I did not feel comfortable with his mother because I should be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, moms, you want to go have lunch today? I should because she becomes family. That's going to be my child's grandmother. I want to get along with his mother. I've never had that issue. Every guy that I've dated, like the mother likes me. I get a, I make it a point to get along because I'm not trying to compete. I hate when I see these women trying to compete with a mm -hmm. man's mother. There is no competition. That man came out that that man came out that woman's coochie and you give him him coochie. You, 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 you know, there is just no comparison, but there should be. It's true, Gary. I know you're not. But women, you can't compete against that. And if you can't beat them, join them. I'm not trying to be in competition with my man's mama. I'm trying to have peace and have a good family life. I'm my husband. I'm and, and it's just pulling rank, get in the way, and I think it's stupid, and we need to do better. Women, you cannot be in competition. But again, the men need to realize that once you're married, it's no more mama's boy. You give up your mama's boy pass. You become one. <laughs> the wife should I be. I never was married. a mama's boy. I, I mean, I never was a mama's boy, even though I put mama, my mother before. Uh, uh, somebody that I'm dating, but I've never been married. Uh, but I've never been a mama's boy. I don't sit up under my mama every day. I don't. Even, matter of fact, I, I I hate I do this, but most of the time I don't even call my mama unless she talks to me first. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible, but you know that's terrible. But well, I mean, but there, it's just a, I'm speaking figuratively, but it, it's just like the man needs to realize that okay, I'm not at mom. I'm not with mom anymore. I have a wife. That's my baby. That's my that's my son's um, mother. She needs she needs to be valued because again, it's all about the marriage. Just like last week when I say who gets served first, the husband or the children? It's the husband because the kids. And I disagree. The, yeah, the, the 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 husband's the one that paid for the groceries. The husband's the one that's the provider and protecting. Now, when there's a burglar in the house, PA. Are you going to send the kids or are you going to go first? I'm going face. I'm going face. Okay, first. so if you're good enough to take a bullet for me, then you're good enough to get served first for dinner and get the big piece of chicken and the biggest ribeye steak on the plate. Yeah, but just because I'm good enough to do it, I've, I should have the ability and the knowledge to know that that's really not for me. These kids need to eat. And they are going to eat. They are. 30 seconds they later, to I'm, I'm going to make they play. But I just want to make sure that I show you gratitude, honor, and respect we both and fix your plate first. If if you cook, I expect you to fix my plate first before the kids. No, because we should be both 
feet fixing these kids' plates together first. That's my. That's just me. And and you know what? To each his own. Everybody, everybody's, everybody's different. But if we're going to a barbecue together, you're not getting up and fixing your yeah, plate. Because you're kids, not refreshing your drink. I'm doing yeah. all that for you. The kids, these kids can't feed themselves, and these and these are these are the only reasons that we ever existed. So I mean. They, they should come first and like, I, I, and that's why my kids love me. They are spoiling rotten, and I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? They're just gonna be some rotten people, you know. But they, you know, they're the only they're the only reason that I ever lived. I ever took a breath. That's it. All you were breathing before your kids, and you're gonna be breathing after your kids. No, the, the only reason but I you're in an airplane, PA, and that decompression goes off, and you have to put your mask on. What do they say to do? Put your head down and kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that part. But they say put your mask on first and then your children. Yeah. You're well, no good. You're no good to your children if you ain't good first. Yeah, but I think that's a little different because you know you don't put you put your children's mask on and then you come, you let's just say you have two or three children, you get one children's mask on. Or you suffocate before you can and help you your children. Now you out and you can't save the you other. You can't children. help them, and now they're on their own. See, so I get that. I get, I get that. However, we're not in the, we're not thirty five thousand feet in the air, which we don't belong in the first place. But that's neither here nor there. That's another story. We're sitting here at a dinner table, you know, and if you know, and if your broke ass ain't got but one piece of chicken, get your shit together. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, well, that too, but it's. It, I'm I'm fixing everybody's plate, but you're getting your plate first. We're all eating together, but it is it's just again, it's the sacredness of the marriage and the relationship. Because once those get, kids leave the fucking house and they're 18 years old and they don't text you and they don't call you anymore, and they only call you when they need money, mm -hmm. my husband's still gonna be there. Yeah. And I'm still gonna be feeding him his plate first and showing him gratitude. But again, there is well, there is a right and wrong answer, but because we're living in different times right now and different dynamics yeah. of relationships, things have changed and things should just work for the relationship. Yeah. And when you're older and you need you need somebody, you know, you you know, if you need to you need to call you you older, you need to call somebody to, to whoop somebody's ass real quick. Cause they've been over there fucking with his mama. You know. Guess who's gonna come through? So you probably need to you know, have some priority with that. I saw this. I saw this thing. I was watching uh, this dating show that's famous on YouTube. I'm not gonna say any name, but this little African guy. He, he was. It, it, I laughed at this so hard, almost like I, I like. I, I think I pulled a muscle. So he said he didn't want to date any ladies with kids that are over, that are older than five or six or seven or something like that. Because his friend had a, dated a lady who had kids that were older. And whenever they got in an argument, her sons would come over there and beat his ass up. <laughs> oh, no. Mm -mm. She wrong for that. She wrong for allowing that. There's no respect factor there. Well, look, look. I mean, you, if you got, if you, if you sit over there and you got a son that's, you know, 16, 17 years old, right? And he's fighting for him. He's not, doesn't have his grown man strip, but he could probably whoop most, most men who are over 45. A 16 year old probably can, probably, he probably can get him. And that dude gets in an argument with you over some bullshit. Cause I mean, a lot of times, most arguments are over BS. But if his mother knows, your son knows you, and you know that with the respect that you and your son has built a relationship, and you bring Pookie over here, Pookie mad because you didn't uh you didn't go pick him up from work and he had to catch the bus, or you didn't get him a plane ticket to fly somewhere, and he said, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. That's why you ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? And then he probably sp spacks you up in the back of the head. You gonna want your son to just like just stay out of it. No, he needs to come take care of that. Because his mom, his mom is not wrong. So now you're gonna now I'm gonna put my son in jeopardy and have him go to jail for domestic violence and have a record on him because I I picked the pookie, I'll whoop his ass. 
Yeah, but you know, and, my, you, and all I need my son is to come bail me out. No, no, and, well, that's fine. But you know, if the guy, if the if you get dealt with, right, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna need somebody to help you out. And if your son understands that mom is right, because you raised him right, then you know what I'm saying. And mom just got herself in a in a in a in a in a which moms do, by the way, in a very precarious situation. Is that the right word for that? In a very compromising situation, you know, it, it'll be wrong for your son not to go handle, you know, go go look out for his mom. And, and I hear you on that, but I carry, so I, I'm not. I'm just gonna call him to come call nine one one because I didn't already. I'm gonna handle that. Well, you ain't got to get no murder charge, you know. You know, you ain't got to get a murder charge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could just, you know, son could just two piece him. He's he's hit puberty. He could pop up. And son will get them. And why do you call your kids over here to beat me up after we get into it? Well, you know, keep your ass in line. Shit. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. I got my okay, behind me. So I have one more video, yeah. one more clip. I'm going to show that clip, and then we're going to wrap things up, okay? Because we, okay. we're on 221, and that's pretty good. So let me, let me go ahead and set this up again. Hold on just one second. Share screen. I got one last one. Yeah, let me see. I got time to get out in the clubs. Man. Let's see. Where are you at? You got, you got what? Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying oh, to. Oh, no. That's, okay. The, I missed it last night. The <laughs> video's not here. Night. <laughs> Running the streets. I hear you. Um, see if I get me a the, the video... There was too many videos up there. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up. The first thing I want to say right. is I want to thank everybody that commented, participated, engaged, liked, subscribed, shared, sent cash out, whatever. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, my panel, thank you for coming up here. Gary, once again, go ahead and wrap up your thoughts. You guys already know what I feel. I feel at the end of the day that the wife should get the front seat, but out of respect, how I was raised, I am going to, I am going to not care, not let my ego get bruised and let the mother-in-law or my mama sit in the front because it's not that big a deal for me. Okay. I already know my position and where I stand with my husband because the kind of man that I will marry will let me know where I stand in his life and and my position with him. So to me, it's not a big deal. But if it does become a big deal, ladies and gentlemen, let your man get in the back seat and you drive and mom and, and mom and the wife are in the front, key, key, keying, and the, and the man is just chilling in the back, scrolling on Facebook, looking at IG models. Fuck it. It is what it is. So Gary, once again, go ahead and your final thoughts and let us know where we can find you again. And again, Gary, thank you so much for your constant support. I really do appreciate you. You're very welcome. Um, so basically, look, um, this is not at all complicated. People, some people make it more difficult than, than what it is. Um, as I said earlier, you know, in general, it'd be my wife that would sit in the front seat. Um, but if my wife respectfully says, well, look, let, let your mom sit in the front, then that wouldn't be a problem. So, uh, in my situation, it would this would never be something that would get out of hand or get complicated or even argue and fight. Like we just keep we just gonna keep it very very simple. Um, where you could find me um, uh, Thursday nights, I do a podcast called the the Control Room. Um, we we come on 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. On Friday nights, I do another podcast called The Real Discussion. We come on 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, and again, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Um, every other Sunday, I have, um, I'm have i on another podcast called Hip Hop Boulevard. That's from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., and all of these podcasts fall under the company I'm president of called Boardwalk Global Media. Um, we have 
for other podcasts that that we uh, do. Um, you, you could find us on Facebook, find us on YouTube. And again, thank I thank you, Grace, for having me. Absolutely. And PA, thank you for coming up here today because you, you, well, you gave you. it that little extra spice that it needed and you was real with it. And that's that's what we have. That's what we do here. We embrace the truth. And yeah. thank you for allowing us to see a vulnerable side of you because that's what it's all about. Seeing other people's views and experiences. And, and, and ladies, this is one of the biggest reasons why men don't be vulnerable with us because we always throw it back in their face. So they'd rather talk to their homeboys about their bullshit rather than they lady because they don't want to hear the repercussions, lady. Just shut, shut up and listen and keep it moving. But go ahead, PA. I know you. I know you're working on some things. But let us know where we can find you and what are you working on. Like I said, I'm working. I'm, I'm working on it. So it's not even anything to speak on because I'm. I, I have so many things I'm working on. I, I I'm. I'm. I, my day is. My my my. I, anyway, uh, I, I'll get it done. Uh, you know, but uh, I'm working. Like I said, I'm working on. Like I said, I'm 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 visiting, you know, and talking with everyone about you know the, the human situation, and I don't mind sharing my vulnerable side, sharing my experiences, if it, especially if it can help someone to, you know, get get to the next phase and to become a better person themselves. I'll I'll tell you, you know, yeah, how, how I've screwed up. I mean, that's probably why I'm right so much because I screw up so much. I know what not to do, and so. Oh, yeah. And, you know, so uh, it's no big deal. And I thank you, Grace, for, you know, for, you know, having me on your platform. I mean, this, this is dope. I, you know? I, I, absolutely. And I mean, I know we just met last night, but look, you know, that's all it takes is a connection. Yeah. And boom, you know, now we're here on a platform and that's what it's all about. Learning from each other to become better versions of, the, of ourselves. Yeah. So with this being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Okay. Thank you once thank you once again, Gary. Um, I'm gonna be working on my next one for next Monday and I'll let you know what it's about. So guys, I hope you and all my embracers out there go ahead and embrace the grace, like, sub, and share. Mama Peace. in the front. <laughs> tie the wife, tie the wife to the bumper and drag her down oh, the highway. Oh no, a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.